Google is absolutely dominating the AI space right now and it's not even close. They just dropped Gemini 3, Nano Banana Pro and their very own AI coder anti-gravity. The things that people are building out of this release are absolutely insane. From integrating voice AI into landing pages to fully functional applications that are beautifully designed and that's the power of Gemini 3. It is incredible at front-end design, UI, UX with animations and clean looking landing pages. But the real power comes when you prompt it correctly and pair it with the right stack and that's exactly what we're going to be covering in this video today. We're going to take Gemini 3, combine it with Nano Banana Pro for AI image generation, wire it up with any 10 for the automations and the backend functionality and build something that's actually useful a LinkedIn infographics generator that creates stunning visuals and posts them directly into your profile all from a single one-shot prompt and if you stick to the end I'll show you exactly how we can deploy any application that we build in Gemini 3 within a few button clicks and with that being said let's dive straight in and look at a demo of the final product so here we've got the final landing page of the LinkedIn infographics generator as you can see it's so sleek clean and it's not the usual design and layout that we'd get when we do any AI generated landing pages. And as you can see, it has nice animations as you scroll, you know, everything's looking clean, it's looking nice. But here we have the main section of the application. As you can see, we have the prompting and branding on the left hand side. So this is where we can describe what the infographics is going to be about. And then we can select a visual style. You know, we've got different kinds of visuals that we can create um, so we can quickly pick the best one for that specific insight or we can let the agent decide which one is the best for the given information. We can also embed our very own logo into the design so that it looks personalized and it's not just a generic infographic that was AI generated. So let's go through and give you guys a quick example. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste some information about the evolution of the Gemini models, right? It's just a very few sentences, couple paragraphs describing the evolution of the different models up until the Gemini 3. And then I'm going to actually go ahead and select timeline and process because this is like a evolution style of infographics. And for the logo, I'm just going to go ahead and paste in my logo and click on generate infographic. So this usually takes about a minute or two. And while it's doing that, I'll explain how we're actually doing this. So this will kick off the NA10 automation. And this is what the backend looks like. So here we have the webhook trigger that gets triggered from the front end. The data passed from the back end goes into a AI node. We build a JSON, we create the image using Nano Banana Pro. And for this, we're using an API, it's called Key API. And this allows us to integrate with Nano Banana Pro API without having to do that directly with Google. And sometimes it actually works cheaper doing it this way. So for this, we're using the Nano Banana Pro and it costs 12 cents a generation. So that's actually quite more expensive, six times more expensive than the original Nano Banana API. However, the results are much better. And for this, we have only two different endpoints. It's very easy. You can just read the documentation. You can copy the curl command and paste it back into your NA10. And this is all we're doing here. So we're creating the image and then we're looping through until the image is ready. We get that image and then we keep a log in Google Sheets and then we respond to the front end with the results. And if there's any errors, we also respond with the error so that we can show it back to the user in the front end. So if we go back to the generation, we can see here we've got a beautifully designed. I've actually prompted the agent to have my kind of branding and my colors. So you can see here the gold and the blue goes with my logo. You can see the logo at the bottom here. It's nicely laid out. It's nicely designed. And if you actually take a look, there's not a single spelling mistake. So this is the power of the new Nano Banana Pro. It's really good at text. So we can safely say that image generation has really come a long way and this could be adapted to fit your own branding and layouts um, and design as well as your logo at the bottom of the image here. So we have the image, we like it. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and add a caption and then we're going to post it into LinkedIn. So I'm just going to go ahead and paste in what I've put in into the initial prompt, for the sake of the demo, and then I'm going to click on post to LinkedIn. So we can see here we have a final confirmation before we go ahead and confirm the post. So let me go ahead. Right. So in the front end, we have successfully posted. We can actually view it as well. It'll we'll take us straight to the link. This is my LinkedIn. You can see all the pasted text there and the image is looking very nice. So hopefully this gives you the power of Gemini 3 and what's possible via a single one shot prompt. And yes, I can prove it right now to you guys. So here we can see that we're inside the AI studio of Google. We have the user. This is my prompt. And yes, it's a long prompt. However, I didn't write a single line from this prompt. I'll show you exactly how we can build a prompt like this, but I've given it one prompt and it knew everything that it needed to do 
to go ahead and build this beautifully designed page, fully functional and integrates with any 10. And as you can see, it built all of the code source files, multiple different files all in one shot. And this is the thing that most people get wrong when Vibe coding any landing page or any application. They send very vague prompts into the AI and sometimes it hits and sometimes it's a miss. But to get more consistent results, I have built a framework called Next. The Next framework, which is an acronym that stands for Navigation, Experience, Execution and Threshold. So for navigation, we want to explain how the users move through the UI, the routing, the page, the steps and the interaction pathways. And then for the experience, this is why we're going to describe the visual design, the layout, branding, animations, components. And then the execution is all the functionality of the backend logic, APIs, um, server actions, databases and whatnot. And then thresholds is basically exclusions, constraints and forbidden tools and boundaries. So this framework has been built into a custom GBT that I've put together. So it's a very simple three step process. We grab the design, we paste it into the Vibe code prompt writer. And then we give it some very brief instructions of how we want the application to work. As you can see here, I went into a little bit more depth because how this GPT works is if you give it some vague prompt, it will ask you these questions. So I just went ahead and added more information so that I can skip the back and forth with the agent to finalize the prompt. So I added a bit more information and I pasted the backend functionality, which is basically NA10. And then it skipped the back and forth and went directly into giving me the final prompt. However, if you don't know all of the different features and things that you would want the app to have, the GPT will actually ask you these questions and basically get that, extract that information from you, giving you the different options. And then you're able to just pick out the different options and it will go ahead and generate the final prompt. Right. And I just want to mention that this isn't just your average custom GPT prompt writer. I actually spent a long time, you know, going back and forth and improving the prompt for the custom GPT to improve the output results. And as an example, I can show you a previous version of the GPT. Once I've given it the instructions, this was the final output. And we can see here is that very generic, typical landing page. Is, it still has some very nice you know, features and animations, but it wasn't quite polished as I would like it to be. So a lot of time went into actually improving this custom GPTs. And if you want to get your hands on this, I'll include it in my school community, which is now actually free. So hop in there. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below and you can grab this custom Vibe Code Prompt Writer. Right, so we've reached a stage where we have a landing page or a web application. We're happy with it. Now we need to actually deploy it so that everyone can access the page. How do we do this? So we have a few different options. We can go ahead and directly deploy the app via the Google Cloud. It's a little bit more cumbersome and it's not really straightforward. So what I would do to deploy this application. So the first step, what we want to do is connect to our GitHub. So at the top here, we're going to click on save to GitHub. Um, we're going to save the changes and all GitHub is, is basically a platform for storing, managing and keeping track of code for software development and applications and makes it very easy to collaborate on projects. It's used worldwide. So this is what we're going to use. You can go ahead to github.com, create an account if you don't have one. We're going to basically authorize the Google app to connect with our GitHub. So I've just gone ahead, given it a name, a description. I'm going to set it to private and then create Git repo. So I'm going to give it a comment for the push. And then we're going to stage and commit all changes. And just like that, we have a new repo in our GitHub account. So now we're ready to go ahead and deploy the application. And for that, I'm going to use Railway, which is a great deployment platform. It has a great cheap entry point for the plans and it makes the process super easy to deploy new projects. And I'm going to show you exactly what we're going to do in just a few button clicks. We're going to have our application deployed and ready to access from anywhere in the world. So I'm going to start a new project. Then we're going to select our newly added repo, the LinkedIn infographics, and then it's going to go ahead and deploy the application. This application doesn't have any environment variables. Of course, if we were deploying a production grade app, we're going to keep all the keys endpoints in an environment variable that we can then configure inside of Railway. And to do that, we just go to variables and this is where we can add new variables to keep the secrets safe within the environment. However, this repo is a very simple landing page. It doesn't include any environment variables or secrets. It just keeps the endpoints directly embedded, hard coded into the code, which is okay for the sake of the demo. If you go to the settings page and scroll down, we're able to also generate a domain, keep the port as the default 8080 and click on generate domain. And just like that, we have a custom domain that we can basically push the changes to. And then we can go to that link and see if our application is deployed. So I'm just going to check the deployment logs here. Uh, the deployment successful. 
Let's go to the URL and then give it a refresh. We can see that it's a blank page. And I did this on purpose because I wanted to show you guys how we can actually update our application once it's live and we want to make some changes, what the process looks like to update it to the live version. So one thing I left out on purpose is the setup and the code that was generated. It works for local testing. However, we haven't actually set up the repo to work for production and deployment. So I'm just going to add this one sentence in the prompt to adapt the repo to include an entry script, which is needed for deployment, some of the config files and setup needed to deploy the application to railway. So I'm going to go ahead and send this. So we're going to go through the process in real time so I can show you guys what that looks like. So now it's going through and building out all of the different config files. So we are ready to go ahead and make the changes. So what we want to do is click on this button at the top right here to save it to GitHub and commit the new changes. We're going to say added deployment config. It's always good to make these comments, you know, helpful so that if you ever need to go back to a previous version, you know, exactly what changes were implemented. So I'm going to just go ahead and stage and commit. And the best part is as soon as we commit the changes into GitHub, Railway will automatically pick up those changes and redeploy our applications with all of the features that we've added. So we don't have to actually do anything. We just sit back and wait for it to redeploy. It will keep the initial deployment running so the app is never actually down and it will just update it once the build of the new features is ready to go. So I'm going to give you a few seconds let it redeploy and then we'll check out the final live version. Right, so we just finished deploying. So if we go to the URL one more time, we can see we've got a fully functioning application live with our very own domain name. So I want to quickly mention another path that we can take to make this application production ready. So with Gemini is very great at the graphics, you know, the initial build of the MVP, make sure it works, it's fully functional. So if I was to take this application to the next level, add in multi-user authentication, databases, and extra functionality, what I would actually do is there's another option where we can download the app and this will actually download all of the repo in a zip file. So we're able to then take it and edit it with our AI coder. So for me, I would actually use Claude code because it's still the best AI coder. And yes, Google's anti-gravity is a direct competitor. By the end of the day, Claude code still wins for us. And I would advise us not to keep jumping from one thing to another and always changing tools with whatever's shiny and new. So I'm still sticking to Claude code, but that's just how I would go about building upon the application, download it, edit it with Claude code, deploy it to GitHub. And then from there, we can go to DigitalOcean, Railway, or for more robust systems, we can deploy into GCP, AWS, and whatnot. So just to recap, the stack that we used was Gemini for the front end generation. We had the next framework from the custom GPT that we used to generate the prompt that we put into Gemini, and then NA10 for the backend integrations, and Nano Banana for any image generations that we want to do, and then Railway for quick and easy deployment, and for further customizability and adding functionality to the application, we'll actually use Claude code. So if you want any of the resources that we've used today, the source code, the NA10, automations or if you want to join a community that's growing with highly engaged people in the space of AI all building and doing great things and jumping on calls together make sure you click the first link in the description below and join my school community and with that being said that'll be it for this one I hope you found some value in this video make sure you hit that like and subscribe button thank you and I'll see you in the next one